Kevin Raver back with you for another daily chat. Thank you for joining me. It's a big day today. I'm going to try to keep this chat short. So many things going on and everything. But today, uh, we're going to want to talk a little bit about gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and why I don't upgrade. So let's get into it. But before I do, I have some sad news to bring to you. Steven Starkman, who I recently did an interview with and a story on uh, this website, you might remember this book, The Proximity of Mortality. It's kind of the last book he made photography-wise of his fight with cancer. Steven passed the other day, and I'm quite sorry to say, uh, he'll definitely be missed. I met Steven 20 some odd years ago on uh, expedition to Antarctica, and uh, we made friends and stayed in touch. and. Uh, seen each other ever since, and of course, uh, when he found out he had cancer, he did let uh, me know and others, and uh, talked about the book he was working on, and he left back uh, a wife and some incredible photography, and he passed peacefully, I'm told. So, um, he'll be missed. I seem to have been losing a lot of friends lately, but um, he knew it was coming, and he and I have had some really good talks part of which is shared on the video, which the link for is below and in the article. So uh, to take a look at it, and if you haven't seen the video, watch it. If you have, haven't gotten the book, take a look at it there too, and you might want to order it. Anyway, today I'd like to talk to you about uh, upgrading. Um, I am a, a serious addict of gear, and uh, they call it, as you all might know, gas or gear acquisition syndrome. A few years ago, specifically during the pandemic, I slowed my um, addiction down. Um, I went to some self-treatment and basically got rid of a lot of my gear. And basically, I've come down to uh, one set of uh, camera systems for me and one for my wife. Um, I used to have an Icons. I used to have Canons. Had some Phase 1 in there for a while. Of course, I have the Sonys and we have Fuji. Uh, I had a lot of cameras. I, I, if there was a new camera that came out, I would buy it. If there was a new camera out, coming out, I would trade my old camera in and, and get a new one. But now we have version 2 of lenses coming out, which are good. And we have new camera systems that are coming out, like the A7R5. Uh, this is a camera that uh, I wrestled with quite a bit. We'll talk about it in a second. Sony just released some other cameras, such as the uh, Sony a7CR, which is a 61 megapixel camera for about $2,700 in a much smaller footprint. Um, and these are all great. And normally I, I get real excited about it and I want to go out and buy it, but uh, I, I don't do that now. And let me tell you why. So first off, this is the uh, Sony A1, which is one of my favorite cameras. And this is the Sony a7R4. Now on the a7 R5 came out, I looked at it and go, oh, I need this camera. And it had a lot of really cool features, but it had the same sensor, which means essentially the quality and the pictures I'm taking weren't going to really change at all. And the features that they really touted were more video features as well as predictive autofocus and some things that as an old landscape photographer standing out on the hill, I'm not necessarily going to need. I take fine pictures with this camera. There's nothing wrong with this camera. There's no reason to trade this camera in. And as hard as it is for me to justify, because I always want the latest model, I was at peace with this. I was at peace with this. This is the A1. There isn't a new version of this, but I don't think I'm going to get rid of this camera for a while. It's my favorite camera. It's probably the finest camera I've ever owned. And I really, really enjoy shooting with it. But then they came out with a new 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Pretty cool looking lens. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, but it's 70 to 200. I already have a 70 to 200 28. It works just fine. You know, they came out with a new 35 millimeter lens. It's not only a tiny little bit smaller, maybe a bit lighter, but it's a 35 millimeter lens. It's a G Master. I already have a G Master. So why should I go and uh, purchase all these new uh, pieces of equipment. I decided I don't need to. The perfect kit is the kit I have. It's working fine. Yes, I would like to have it. Maybe someday if I have extra cash lying around, I'll go and get it. But essentially what would have turned me is if the A7R5 was a 90 megapixel, offered more megapixels and um, more other features like why don't they put in uh, focus stacking? Why don't they do frame averaging? 
you know, these are things that are a real benefit to photographers and they're going to have to put those things into camera systems if they want to stay competitive with the mobile phone systems that are out there today. I don't know. But anyway, you know what? I'm at peace. I'm not upgrading. I'm not buying new cameras. My wife uses a Fuji X-H1 and an X-T4. She has a whole Fuji uh, system. And we looked at upgrading to the X-T5. Um, there's not really a lot of things that make it worthwhile moving up to that camera system, maybe uh, quite yet. Maybe when the X-T6 comes out, I might give it some thought. And she's got the X-H1. Yeah, there's some cool stuff about the X-H2, and there's two versions of the X-H2. We won't get into that now. But uh, no, we decided we'll stay where we are. We're not going out and taking as many pictures as we used to. Those cameras still take beautiful and incredible photographs. And we had no problems and no complaints with those cameras when we had them. You know, now maybe if I was a wedding photographer and I wanted predictive autofocus, I might consider upgrading with the Sony because that stuff is some pretty cool technology they have there right down to, you know, AF tracking and uh, zooming in and focus on, say, an insect eye. For heaven's sakes, things, things are getting crazy. But the bottom line is, and I think all of you should look at this and consider this, is do you really need to do an upgrade? Is it worth doing an upgrade now? Is it worth taking your hard-earned money and going out there and spending it on new upgrades? What my wife and I have been doing is taking our old camera systems and we go down to little Airbnb cottages or get away for a little while or do something around the house with that money that I would have had that allocated. Now, I'll put it in a budget for next year just in case there's something new that pops up and looks good. But for now, I'm really happy with where I'm at. And I'm sure that many of you are too. And I just want to say that unless it's a major upgrade or you're upgrading from two previous versions or something, the cameras that you probably have right now are probably doing a pretty good job. So therefore, I'm very happy that I have got my addiction under control and I haven't gone out and purchased any of these things. I have a lot less gas and I'm having just as much fun taking photographs with the gear that I have. And it's only a few years old. Hey, anyway, this is just a short one today. It's Kevin Raber from PhotoPXL. Thanks for joining me on the Daily Chat, and I'll see you tomorrow.